This is question number eight. In the first part, we're asked to express four cos theta minus two sine theta in the form r cos of theta plus alpha, where r is greater than zero and alpha is between zero and 90 degrees. The question carries three marks. If we look at the form r cos of theta plus alpha, we can write this as r cos theta cos alpha minus r sine theta sine alpha. Equating coefficients, we can see that r cos alpha will be equal to 4 and r sine alpha will be equal to 2. So r sine alpha is equal to 2. Therefore, from this, I can say now that r will be equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. That will give me that r is the root of 16 plus 4, which is root 20. We can write the root of 20 as 2 root 5. So I've given my answer in exact form. We're not asked to write this as a decimal. If we now look at alpha, alpha is now the inverse tan. So we'll have the inverse tan of 2 over 4, or if you like, 1 half. I'm just going to write 2 over 4 just to show that I'm using the information in the questions. So we'll have alpha and this now in the calculator in degrees mode, shift mode 3. We'll do now the inverse tan of a half or 0.5. And that's going to give me 26.565. So I'm going to say 26.57 and that's correct to two decimal places. So 26.57 degrees and that now is to 2 dp. So that gives me alpha. So I can put this back together and I can say now that this will be 2 root 5. We will have cos of theta and then we'll have plus the 26.57 degrees. So that is how I can write now 4 cos theta minus 2 sine theta in the form uh, of r cos of theta plus alpha. In the second part, A, we're asked to solve the equation 4 cos theta minus 2 sine theta is equal to 3 for theta between 0 and 360 degrees. This part now carries 4 marks. So all I'm going to do is simply now set this equal to 3. I've got an expression for 4 cos theta minus 2 sine theta just here and we will set this equal to 3 and go ahead and solve. So what we'll have then with our exact value, 2 root 5 cos of theta plus the 26.57 degrees will be equal to 3. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 root 5. We can say that cos of theta plus the 26.57 degrees will be equal to 3 over 2 root 5. What I'm going to do is take the inverse cosine of both sides, get a principal value, and consider subsequent solutions. So theta plus 26.57 will be equal to now the inverse cosine of 3 over 2 root 5. Okay, I'm just going to now write this out. So what we'll have is theta plus the 26.57, and putting this through the calculator, we want to now the inverse cosine, so we want shift cos. We will have 3 over 2 root 5, and that is going to give me now 47.869 and so on and so forth. So 47.86 dot 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 plus multiples of 360 degrees. And then we will have the next one now, the theta plus the 26.57 will be equal now to 360 minus this value. And of course, that's by symmetry. And then we'll have subsequent solutions 360 degrees on. Loads of different ways of solving trig equations. This is entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do is just store this in the calculator. Shift store A. I'm now going to look at my first solution and it's going to be the answer minus the 26.57 
and that's going to give me now 21.299 and so on and so forth. So I'm going to say theta will be equal to, and I'm going to give this to one decimal place. We're not asked to give a level of accuracy, so I'm simply going to state that this is going to be 21.3 degrees, and that's to 1 dp. If we now consider subsequent solutions, we'll be outside the interval. With this one right here, what we're going to have then is 360 minus the answer that we got, and then we're going to subtract from that now the value of 26.57. So minus 26.57, and that now gives me 285.56. So 285.6. Theta will be equal to 285.6 degrees, again, to one decimal place. So all I've done is written these out. We have one solution here, and then subsequent solutions 360 on. By symmetry, we have one here and then subsequent solutions 360 on. So we're only uh, going to get two in the interval, and you might want to show a little more work in, but this should be sufficient now for the four marks. In part B, for five marks, we're asked to determine the greatest and least values of 25 minus the quantity 4 cos theta minus 2 sine theta squared as theta varies, and in each case, find the smallest possible value of theta for which that value occurs. We need to be a bit careful with this question, and what I'm going to do is a sketch. If I consider now the function that I've just created, 2 root 5 cos of theta plus 26.57 degrees, we have now two transformations on the cosine curve. We have a scale factor stretch of 2 root 5 in the y direction, and we have a translation of 26.57 degrees in the negative x direction. So what we're going to have is something now that looks approximately give or take like the following. So what I've got is this scale factor stretch, and it will do something like this. This is a very, very inaccurate drawing, but should give us some idea. Something like this. Okay, so what we have now is this point right here. And the maximum value is going to be 2 root 5, or we could say the root of 20. If we look down here, this is going to be now the minimum value, and that is going to be minus 2 root 5, or minus root 20. If we consider we're going to be squaring this, so whichever of these value, values I take, it will give me both times 20. Just consider now, just subbing this in. What I, if I sub this in, either if it's plus or minus, we're going to square it and it will have a maximum of 20. So what I need to consider is the zero as well. I'm going to look at this point here and I'm also going to focus on this point right here. So what we're going to have now, putting this point on, this is 90 degrees normally, but we have moved now 26 degrees to the left. So what we're going to have then is this point, and just calculating that, that will be 63.43 degrees, and it will have a value of zero. So what I'm looking to do is essentially create this to be both zero and the maximum, as we're going to be squaring it. This point now has moved 26.57 degrees now in the negative x direction. This was 180. Remember, this one has gone now outside. This was a maximum, which would have given us exactly the same. When we squared it, it would have given us 20. This one will as well. And this one has moved now the 26.57 back from 180, which is 154 point four three degrees and the value right here will be minus and I'm going to write it as minus root 20. So if we look at this now if I square this so just looking at minus root 20 squared minus root 20 squared is going to give me 20. If I look now at zero squared and I'll put it just here quite clearly that is going to give us zero. 
So if I think now about the maximum value, the maximum or the, the greatest value, and I'll put it just here, the greatest value will be 25 minus zero. So that's quite clearly going to give us now 25. And that will be now when theta, so when theta is going to be equal to, and we're gonna take this point right here, theta is equal to 63.4 degrees. So that's my first answer. That gives me the greatest value. Now the least value we're going to have now when this is 25 minus 20, as I'm going to square that. So 25 minus 20, which is going to give me five. And we can say the, uh, the first positive value of theta for which that occurs is going to be this point just here. And that is now when theta is equal to 153.4 degrees. And that's one way that you can do it. I suppose there's lots of different approaches here, but remember we're squaring this bracket. If you wanted to draw this function squared, you're more than welcome to consider that, and you'd end up with something looking like so. I've done it now in its original form, and then considered squaring these terms. As stated, if you wanted to draw it like this, you'd see now that it has a maximum of 2 root 5 and then a minimum value of 0. We sub those in, we found the values, so we have now 25 when theta is 63.4 and 5 when theta is 153.4.